What's going on, you guys? Uh, I'm going to be talking to you today about these beautiful things. These are all of your deployment, condition, and objective cards for Star Wars Legion. Uh, I'm only going to be covering the ones that come in the core set. We know that there are more coming, but as these are the only ones available right now, that's what I'm covering. As more become available, I will probably be covering those in the future as they become available. But for now, we're going to talk about the basic four of each type that you get in your core set, uh, and we're gonna talk about how you can apply them to your battlefield and to your build, uh, which ones you should pick, how this whole thing works. So basically, you're gonna shuffle all these and you're gonna deal out, you know, you're gonna deal out three before the game starts. And it's gonna look something like this, you know, and you're gonna set one aside. Of course, I won't be looking at them, I won't have them face up. So you're gonna set them up kind of like this, and whoever has the most points will elect to either be the blue or red player. Uh, usually the blue player has a slight advantage, so usually if you have the better initiative bid, you'll want to be the blue player, but there are some advantages to being the red player as well as you get the last choice. So you're going to start uh, you know, eliminating cards from the left, and the blue player may say, oh, you know what, I don't like rapid reinforcements, and then the red, you know, red player will say, oh, okay, well, I'm going to eliminate this one. Blue player may say, oh, I want to eliminate this one, which locks this one in because you can't eliminate all of them. And then the red player has last choice. I'm like, ah, oh, well, you know what? I'm going to eliminate this one. And then you're going to go with the farthest to the left. So it would be long march, limited visibility, and key positions, right? But what does that all mean? We're going to talk about all of these cards in greater detail. So let's jump right in. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Battle Lines. Battle Lines is the clearest, most simplest version, and this gives you your entire six-foot board, and you have every, you know, all the way up into one. So you see, you're going to see some numbers on here, and this is telling you where you can deploy your units. Uh, and the little one here means you're going to use a range ruler of distance one. Now you've got a big long range tool in here, but you're just going to pull out this one and use that and mark it off. Now. Uh, this is exactly six inches, so you have exactly six inches on where you can deploy. It's as simple as that. And you're also going to have these little handy dandy little square tools that are going to come in your core set, and you can mark put these at the edges of the board to mark off where your six inches are. Uh, but you won't really need to use those with this one as much. Um, the in important thing about this is you're going to actually be probably have the best chance of actually shooting your opponents or being shot first turn if you deploy at the front edge of it. So if you deploy all you know, your units right here and you move forward right away, you stand a chance of being shot first turn. So this is one of those deployments that you want to be careful with because you might end up getting shot right away. Now similar to that, we have the Long March. Now the Long March is just the opposite in that it's you playing at the long court sides of the board. So uh, all this stuff here in the middle of the board is where we're going to be moving and we're going to basically turn the board this way and we're going to be playing on the long edges. So blue player would deploy on this side, red player would deploy on that side. The three here means you're going to use three range tools, uh, and each, so 18 inches deep. Now this is one of those ones you're going to start off a little farther from each other. So this one can potentially favor, uh, you know, longer range weapons like mortar launchers or you know they are like Leia and Veers' long range attacks. Uh, this one also can favor really fast uh, units. So maybe if you've got like some speeder bikes or uh, snow speeders, uh, they can kind of cover that distance and get some earlier shots in potentially. So this one's nice for that. Now let's look at major offensive. Major Offensive gives you opposite corners. Now this one is interesting because this one we're going to have to really take, pay close attention to these numbers. You see you've got a 3 here and a 3 there and that actually, you don't have a range 6 tool because it only comes with 4 instances of it. So you're going to just use 2 of these to mark off where on the board. Let's just look at how we would mark off the board. So if you look over here you see I've kind of put some of these down and I'm basically using the 1 here to mark uh, distance 1 from this side and I've used three and three and marked it off. So this is, and this cuts the cuts it completely in half. And these are always symmetric. So it's always gonna be the exact same on either side. This should be a mirror image of each other. So the red and blue player have the same thing. And this is gonna have you guys, you know, firing at each other from a distance. So it can be potentially, uh, at some points you could be potentially kind of close, but a lot of times you're gonna be um, putting some things maybe in the corner. And this one's gonna kind of depend on where objectives are and how terrain is also. I kind of like this one if there's some terrain that's a little closer to my side. Uh, maybe I'll want to go with this one if that's the case. But I've, I've kind of marked these all off according to the numbers on there. So let's look at the next one. The next one is Disarray. This array is one of the hardest ones to do um, because of the fact that it forces you to be in opposite corners. 
Uh, this one can really screw you up and it, it forces everybody to deploy uh, at least one of your units in each deployment zone. So you're going to have to divide your forces. If you've only got the core set, you know, in, in the early launch wave stuff, you're only going to have one commander uh, until, you know, such time that more commanders become available. This is going to be a hard one, uh, you know, to, to make work because of the fact that you're going to have to deploy at least one unit out of range of your commander. And there's, there's a couple of ways to mitigate this. You can go with like a whole bunch of troopers and put all the troopers in one corner and then have your commander and a big vehicle or something like that over here and then just have your commander issue orders to you know themselves and the big vehicle and then have all your troopers just pull from the pile or if you're using things like long range comms you know you can you know can you can mitigate those those risks that way but uh, you know this one can definitely have everybody split up and if you do have like maybe only one or two units set up over here, your opponent could potentially come in in that way. So this one is usually, uh, a lot of people will skip this one because a lot of builds do not favor it. But this one, again, depending on how the terrain is, if you've got, you know, maybe some blocking terrain over here in the corner, maybe you could put, you know, your, you know, your commander and your one vehicle or something like that over there and they'd be safe and have all the rest of your core as an army start off all, all the way away. Of course, you'll be out of range of command cards in that case. Um, now we're gonna look at conditions. So we've got all these different condition cards and basically they represent things that are gonna re you know, physically impact the battlefield, like the time of day or whatever. Uh, you've got one here called limited visibility. Uh, this one says during the first round, each unit's line of sight beyond range two is blocked. And during the second round, line of sight beyond range three is blocked. So this one very clearly is disadvantageous to long range attacks. Uh, so if you've got your mortars on your ATST, if you've got like Leia or Veers trying to get that, you know, that really long range shot first turn, this is going to stop that. It's going to stop any kind of long range attacks, you know, range four and beyond, all that stuff. It's going to be really tough. Even range three attacks aren't going to happen right away. So this one is rough. Um, for that, but this is a great one to have as your selected option if you notice that your opponent has those things and you don't. Because it's not going to harm you at all. So that you know, that's definitely uh, one one time where you would want something like this. Uh, we've got hostile environment. So hostile environment is interesting. It says troopers, uh, trooper units whose leader is not in base contact with a piece of terrain cannot remove suppression tokens during the end phase. So what that means, you you remove a suppression token at the end of every end phase off of every unit on the board. Vehicles, however, don't get suppression, right? So this is going to hurt those units that have a lot of troopers. This is actually going to be really beneficial on units that, um, you know, this, is, this will work a little bit better if you have more vehicles, perhaps. But this will also work well for you if the battlefield has got a lot of terrain because you can just have units go from, from tree to tree and touching piece to piece. If you've got wide open spaces, you know, and, and maybe there's going to be an objective here in the middle, uh, it's going to be tough on those units that want to go into the wide open spaces if they get stuck there and they can't be in base contact with something. Uh, if your opponent has more, like a lot of troopers and they're totally maxed on troopers, this might be one that kind of harms them a little bit. This is also could be useful if you've got a lot of ways to give out suppression. So if you've got weapons that are suppressive as well, uh, it could potentially work for you. Next up, rapid reinforcements. Rapid reinforcements is interesting in that it's not like something wrong. It's not like snow or fog. This one is actually saying that starting with the blue player, each player sets aside up to two non-commander trooper units uh, and, and their order tokens. And, and basically, it, and it's, it's, they take them off the board and they're gonna come in um, you know, at the end of round two and they're gonna come in already activated. Um, so almost for half of the game, you're gonna lose them. You know, and I say half the game, it's not exactly half because you're gonna to get to use them on turn three, four, five, and six, so technically two thirds of the game. But so much happens uh, for, you know, for round one and two. I'll, for a lot of games, by rounds like five and six, it, you know, it may already be decided. So you're losing, you know, two units, each of you, during really important turns. So this can do a couple of things. Now this one is uh, particularly interesting if, you know, maybe your opponent has only three trooper, you know, three core units, um, and and he's loaded them up really, really heavily. Like they have this, the the extra trooper, they have the special weapons, they have all those upgrades on there, um, and maybe they don't have many other trooper units. Maybe they're all like vehicles and their commander, right? Uh, well, so now you were basically taking two of their heavy hitting units off of the board. Uh, of course, it's going to do the same thing for you, but maybe you're running six 
core units or you've got a lot of troopers maybe you have a ton of troopers out there and you can afford to take two of your maybe maybe you have two troopers that are just kind of bare bones and don't have any uh, upgrades and you can afford for them not to be you know uh, not to be shooting for the first couple of rounds and this way maybe you can make advantage of that time by taking you know you you because you'll lose less and maybe you take out their commander before their troopers drop in you know and kind of suppress that advantage so that's something that can happen um, and keep in mind this can work with any type of trooper so as more troopers come out for the game anything that has the keyword trooper uh, that can potentially drop in and that can, you know so as new trooper types become available that will make this potentially more interesting and this one can uh, you know it has some future proofing where it can work you know well with new things that come out and then lastly we have clear conditions clear conditions has no effect so this just represents that we're you know it's a bright sunny day that we're that we're finding on and uh you know and, and this is a great one like if you don't like any of the other ones that are being shown just go with clear conditions you'll have no problem there all right so next we're going to look at objectives all right so uh, objectives basically you got these objective tokens a lot of them are going to use these and objectives are kind of how you win the game so objectives are really important for that aspect so we're going to start with intercept the transmissions uh for the setup then they a lot of times they have setup and victory you're going to place an objective token in the center of the battlefield then you can place one halfway between the center and the left short edge and halfway between the right short edge so basically this turns the game into kind of area control you're gonna have one right in the middle you're gonna have one here over to that side and have one over to the other side um as you can't really see it and basically everybody here let me see if i can turn it a little bit so there we go we've kind of got our battlefield kind of split up rough example and it's going to become uh, a fight for the middle so at the end of rounds two and four each player is going to gain a victory token for each objective they control and at the end of the game they're going to gain two victory tokens for each objective they control uh, victory tokens are how you win the game whoever has the most wins uh, and so how do you control them? You, well, you control them by having uh, trooper unit leaders uh, at range one of the objective token. So and, you know each one has basically this circle. The more trooper unit leaders you have at close range of that objective token, you're going to have control. So if you have two and your opponent only has one, then you win that one. Okay, And so it becomes area control. Now what ends up happening when you play uh, intercept the transmissions, more often than not, one player is going to start kind of maybe more heavily on one side another player is going to start a little more heavily on the other side and it's going to end up becoming a fight for the middle usually each player you know one player can usually lock down one without any problem and another player can usually lock down another one without much of any problem it always ends up becoming a fight for the middle and that's what intercepted transmissions is kind of all about um, and it, if, if you have a build that looks like it's going to be able to lock down the middle better than somebody else's or maybe the the middle of, of a board is wide open maybe your board has been set up such that there's no terrain in the middle nobody to hide from those troopers and maybe you've got long range units like you've got your your range four stormtroopers you've got an ATST you know with a couple of weapons and it's got the long range stuff you know you you've got enough you got an eight or maybe you've got an ATRT with a laser cannon you've got long range cover uh, from multiple angles to lock down the middle and keep your opponent from getting there maybe this is a good one for you because maybe you're gonna you know take them out and then you'll run in at the end and you know and and take it when they can't react and get more victory points than your opponent um, that's one you know one way you could potentially work it but uh, yeah intercepted transmissions becomes a battle for the middle next one is recover the supplies so recover the supplies is you place an unclaimed objective token in the center of the battlefield then after that starting with the blue player players are going to alternate placing four or more unclaimed objective tokens on the battle uh four more not or more unclaimed objective tokens in the battlefield and each token must be placed beyond range one of each deployment zone and beyond range one of any other objective tokens so you're going to place basically all five of them all right uh we'll say they're something like that they're not going to exactly be like that, but you're going to you're going to place, and they, they have to be you know far enough away from the deployment zones. What happens is a, 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 a trooper units gain the ability to claim. So again, this one is another one that's going to deal heavily with trooper units. Trooper units are very important, um, and you're going to be able to claim this, and it'll be yours. But now that doesn't mean that it's yours for the whole game, because when you claim one of these, that troop that unit is going to hold on to that, and they can move it with them. They can carry it with them. If they if they get killed, it's going to drop, and, it's, and then somebody else can come by and claim it. And basically, at the end of the game, whoever has the most of them claimed is going to win. Uh, so, so these are important. So, what you want to do is you want to be able to get at least three of them and hold them. 
So if you've got, you know, if you only have, you know, three troopers, uh, you know, and maybe, well, four probably because you'll have to have a commander, right? If you don't have that many troopers, this one is going to be actually really hard for you to hold them. Because if you lose a single trooper, now your chance of winning are very, very slim, right? So if, or if you're going up against somebody else who has, you know, six or seven troopers, or maybe sometimes even more than that, right? Um, then, you know, they have a much better chance of actually being able to pick these things up. So you have to be really careful and you have to hold them for the whole game. So you don't even have to get them early. Some of the things that can help this, like terrain, like I, I have this piece of terrain, for example. So maybe this is a piece of terrain that's right here, and I can take this one and move a unit in this cave and have them hide in there, and they're not going to be they're not going to be hurt for a while. I can have another one, and they can kind of come into this cave, you know, and I can have some guys set up over here, and then I just have to hold one more, you know. If there's terrain that favors your deployment area, uh, then this one could be good for you because you know maybe you can just you have to be able to hold it and survive. So that's what this one is all about works really really better if you have a lot of uh, troopers a lot of trooper units it's going to work really well for those let's talk about the next one the next one oh uh, yes key positions key positions is an interesting one so for setup starting with the blue player players al uh, alternate placing objective tokens on the battlefield until three tokens have been placed or no more tokens can be placed. Each token must be placed on a piece of terrain that is completely outside all deployment zones. And at the end of the game, it, uh, you, whoever has, uh, you know, you, for each terrain piece with an objective token, whoever has the most unit leaders in base contact with that terrain piece are gonna gain a victory token. So this one is using three tokens and you're gonna alternate placing them. This one heavily, heavily favors the blue player because the blue player, let's say I'm deploying on this side and I'm the blue player and you're deploying on that side you know, uh, and we have terrain kind of scattered all around or whatever, I can just say, okay, well, I, you're only gonna get to pick one, so I'm gonna pick these two because they're right by my deployment zone. I can just sit up there and I don't have to even move. I can just sit there and aim and stand by or aim and dodge each turn and just kind of dig in really heavy and you have to come to me, you know? And so it's so much easier to defend from behind cover, for example. Uh, you know, and, and, and it really favors the blue player because they are really going to be able to dig in. Um, if you're the red player, I would always, if possible, try to eliminate key positions for that reason. Um, of course, it is kind of going to depend on where terrain is because if all of the terrain is exactly in the center for some reason, I don't think I would ever want to play with all the terrain. Like I like it to be a little more, a little more natural. Well, then it might end up being even, you know. It, it, but all of these are kind of subjective to how your board is set up because you're going to build your board before you you pull out these objectives. So it's not like you're going to know, oh, well, we're going to end up having to get, you know, we're going to end up playing breakthrough, so or we're going to end up playing key positions. So let's build the board this way. You're, you're, you're gonna build the board before you flip these cards over, before you know what's coming. So, uh, so you're gonna have to look at the board and kind of figure out what's gonna work best, but usually terrain is gonna be scattered all over the place uh, and it's gonna give a huge advantage to the blue player. Next up, the last objective is called Breakthrough. This is one of my favorite ones because it totally changes everything up. Up until this point, uh, it's generally kind of favored people who happen to have a lot of uh, a lot of unit leaders, a lot of a lot of troopers. Um, this one works well with vehicles that you don't necessarily have to have troopers. In fact, certain troopers, slow troopers like Darth Vader, for example, are kind of slow. Don't do too well with this one. So uh, this one is no special setup. It just says victory at the end of the game. Each player gains a victory token for each of their unit leaders within an enemy deployment zone. It's as simple as that. You just have to get to where the enemies are. It's that simple. Which is really cool. So, so like, so, the, so that one, it kind of, it, it's gonna make you go back, you know, to these. Here, you've got a lot of flexibility. This one would be nuts. But uh, with this one, you're just marching straight across. But it's fun on something like the long march, where it just becomes like a game of football at this point. All your guys have to get to the end zone over here, and all these guys have to get to the end zone over here. And so, this one, I've had a lot of success using fast vehicles. Even though they cost a lot of points and they're not, you know, that conducive to winning, like snow speeders, for example, can kind of just fly around in the center for like turns two, three, and four, and then turn five, they just turn around, and then turn six, you know, with that compulsory move and speed three, they have no problem traversing, you know, so much of the bat. They can go from like midfield all the way to the end zone in a single turn. So it's really not hard for them to uh, for them to get, you know, into that uh, deployment zone. And they can spend the rest of the time killing because every unit you kill, you know, this is a great, you know, breakthrough is a great one if you have more units than the other, you know, and actually most of these are generally good if you have more units 
than your opponent. But breakthrough is a lot of fun for that. If somebody's going with like, oh, I'm going with two ATSTs, uh, Vader, and uh, and three stormtroopers, and that's it. Well, that's great, but how you're not going to have even if you know, even if I don't kill any of your units, you're not going to have enough units to to score that many points because you're only going to have six potential six maximum points. All I have to do is ignore you, run right past you, and I might have eleven points. You know, <laughs> so so that's that's uh, that's basically everything. That is all of it. I hope this was helpful. I also have a, a write-up on this on Crabok.com, so, so check out Crabok.com. Uh, there is another round of the giveaway going on right now, so if you aren't already a subscriber, you can enter to win. Um, all you have to do is become a subscriber and leave a uh, comment on this or one of my videos. It's as simple as that, and you can win an expansion of your choice in the form of a $20 gift card to Cool Stuff. So that's great, um, but if you've had any problems you know, with trying to get the game started and, and we're a little confused by some of these cards, I hope it helped you out. But let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Share this with your friends who are getting started in Legion. Maybe it'll answer some of their questions too. But let me know. You can hop in Discord, ask some questions over there. But I have resources also on Crabok.com. I have guides for other games as well like Armada, Legion, X-Wing. Uh, we have message boards over there. Um, you have to message me if you want to make an account though because we've got too many Russian spam bots that are coming in all the time. So I turned off registration automatically so I have to manually activate them now. But crazy stuff. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think guys. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.